Hey there guys and welcome to the Impact Zone Podcast. We're back to talk more TNA wrestling shenanigans and we're here to talk about the uh, press conference that they had for the TNA Rebellion uh, show. They did this on their Facebook and social medias. Uh, I think that they really, and and I think I suppose the website and a few other places, um, uh, for the media mostly. I really think that they should put this uh, up on their YouTube. Hopefully, they will. Uh, they've already put the uh, lights out thing uh, that was promoted near the end up on their uh, YouTube's, I believe. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, like. I can't go and watch through this. Um, I guess we could put it, put the uh, audio on in the background uh, or whatever. But it's very stock standard for the most part in as far as it being a uh, media uh, discussion uh, promo between the challenger Nick Nemeth and the world champion Moose. It gets a, it gets further and further heated throughout um, the uh, the the show and uh, up to the signing of the contract for the match, um, and at the end, uh, <clears throat> Nick Nemeth super kicks Brian Myers, and uh, th- then Moose and. Uh, Nemeth ha- get pulled apart by uh, security and whatnot. So very interesting um, to sort of see this. There was some stuff in here about um, some poignant stuff, I guess, that relates to the story uh, and whatnot. Um, but <clears throat> this was mostly done as, you know, an angle as well as uh, doing something uh, to hype up the match even more. I know they've been on TV and on radio here and there in Vegas, apparently, uh, <clears throat> through the last few days and few weeks uh, and whatnot. So, again, they've been trying to hype this show up. Uh, tickets have been selling relatively quickly in the last few days, in the last few week, uh, le- yeah, last few days really. Um, the last few weeks they haven't really like shifted a whole lot of those. T- like they shifted like most of those tickets to be honest, but like they were shifting them pretty slowly to be honest for the most part. Um, but suddenly, just tickets suddenly just started spiking, so um, <clears throat> getting in much much bigger lots in the last uh, couple of days just before the show. They're much the same as the last show um, in that regard that they sold uh, most of the tickets in the last, like, day or two before the show was happening uh, and whatnot. Um, So, again, to all the people that were, like, dooming and glooming it, I was like, dude, wait and see, wait and see, wait and see. We'll wait and see, you know, like, they might sell another 500 tickets in two minutes. And then you'll be, like, sitting here with egg on your face. Like, they might not do that, and they didn't do that. But again, like, eventually they have sold, like, that many tickets in the last couple of days and whatnot. Um, So, again, those people are like, oh, they're not going to sell out. They're not going to get anywhere near it. They're going to get 500 people or whatever, that's it. Suddenly it's up to a 1,000. Oh, well, they're only going to get a 1,000 people. Well, now it's up to almost, you know, one one and a half thousand or so. Um, so those people are going, ah, oh, okay, well, they're almost sold out. Well, shit, <laughs> you, you know, like, again, the doomers and gloomers, you need to not count your chickens before the hatch because you never know what's going to happen. Yes, the tickets can be slow, and the last time they went there, they were pretty slow as well. Um, so, but yeah, uh, no, I, I thought that, you know, eventually it's like, dude, why aren't these tickets selling? It's like, this, this doesn't make any sense. I felt like maybe people, 
<clears throat> don't have the money for it or saving up or whatever again to go to this big show. So, and it depends, like, again, like, are there people, you know, coming that, uh, you know, from WWE or from AEW or, you know, how many other shows like Ring of Honor or whatever indie shows have they been to and uh, how much money have they got in their wallet? Who knows? Like, again, like, so it depends very much on how much the wrestling fans and, like, people in general uh, have in their back pocket to spend on a wrestling show. So, yeah. <clears throat> but still, they are getting up there with the, those uh, sales. Overall, what I thought about uh, this uh, press conference, uh, I think it was pretty good. Um and, uh, and that I think that the end part of uh, the lights out is very, very interesting um, uh, and whatnot. <clears throat> it sort of gave you a lot of cryptic clues to something. And <clears throat> actually, I kind of want to put that up here. Right, here we go. Uh, I knew I, could, I saw it pretty uh, recently here on the thing. It does say who will show up when the lights go out this Saturday at Rebellion. So that informs us that somebody is showing up. Um, and who could it be? <laughs> so... I, I can't play the video here again, but it offers a lot of like very cryptic, cryptic clues and whatnot. Uh, a bit as probably part of this person's um, video package, and the same for the music, I'm assuming. So this will be part of their video package. Lights out, though. Lights out, kind of. You feel like times that lights go out, you know, is kind of a bit odd. You know, why do they put out the lights? They put out the lights for, like, PCO, The Undertaker, people who, like, in theory are manipulating the lights somehow, uh, Sammy Callahan. Um, guys like that that can somehow manipulate the lights uh, in in certain ways, why would you say that this is going to have something to do with the lights going out when it's not somebody who can manipulate the lights in some regard? Um, because if the lights go out and then you see this person revealed, like, well... Besides, like, it being production, like, what's the explanation for the lights going out? You know, like, if you're going to promote that the lights are going to go out, then it's kind of an obvious, like, segue moment. Like, and it builds that anticipation in a way, but if you just had... You know, this thing that this promo video and, you know, you kind of are implying something or someone is coming, you know, then where and who and what and all of that sort of stuff and how will they, you know, add to the roster. Um, so, Yeah. It's, it's interesting to think about. Uh, and, like, you could throw out a thousand names. I know, like, some someone was saying that it could be MJF or something. <laughs> like, dude, I wouldn't mind. Like, but I don't think so because I think, like, he has officially re-signed with AEW. He's just, like, out with injuries, dude. Like, he's just, like, not able to really do anything and uh, <clears throat> has to you know, go our way and recover um, from said injuries. So, <clears throat> fair enough. Like, I think the dude would, like, um, 
I think the dude would do great in TNA. Like, I think now that Triple H is in control of WWE, I think he, now he could have a good opportunity in WWE to do some stuff and actually be pretty free to actually do the kinds of things that he kind of wants to do. I think with Vince running things, I don't think he would have <clears throat> been able to kind of do the things that he kind of would want to do over there. Um, so it's up to him, I think. I think, like, signing another contract, especially when you're injured, like, might have been a bad idea. But then again, how are you getting paid or whatever, that sort of thing, maybe that's what it's all for. It's just for the fact that, hey, man, I'm injured, so, and these guys are going to take care of me, and thank you so much for that, but I'm probably moving on from here after this. Uh, at some point, and I think he's got to think about that too. So I just just don't know that it's it, it it makes any sense. I don't I don't see it making any sense um, that it's MGF. Like, <clears throat> could it be? I don't know. Like you you try to go through the speculation. We talked about Mike Santana coming in. Could be him. Uh, we've talked about Jonathan Gresham returning. Could be him. I guess. Um, it could be somebody else. Um, so it's interesting, like Macklin has said, like we have talked about a little bit, that he wants to be involved in the Rebellion card. He's not currently. He could be involved in this segment, and the person who is showing up could have the lights go out and then appear and, you know, have a showdown with Macklin leading to something, you know, at the next uh, pay-per-view or whatever. So it, uh, it is interesting to, you know, think about, like, like when they had uh, Rebel, uh, Hard to Kill at the start of the year, they promised, you know, you know some new faces, uh, one of the biggest signings in TNA history um, and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, like... They're, they've continued to build and grow and do a lot of good things. <clears throat> a lot of it has gone unnoticed, unfortunately, um, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is. So, like, I hope, like, it, it, it's going to be a good thing one way or another. But, again, it feels like, man, they just cannot catch a break. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. They've got so much good stuff going on and, and whatnot that it's just, like, criminally underrated for what it is. Um, <clears throat> and they deserve way more, in in my opinion, for, for what they're doing as a more major promotion. Um, but, yeah. We will have to continue and try to support it as best as what we can. I try to support it with this YouTube channel uh, as part of my fandom. Uh, I'm watching everything pretty much anyway, and uh, just my addiction in general of watching uh, TNA and wrestling in general. This is what I, you know, have decided to watch, and you know, I'm not really going to tune out uh, at any point because it's like, well. I just don't want to tune into anything else. Like, it doesn't really interest me. I don't want to get <clears throat> back in there with something else. I just prefer to stick with this. And uh, if it, like, I, God forbid that it becomes bad again. But, you know, if it does, who knows? Like, we'll have to struggle through that again. But I don't see it, honestly. I think... I think, uh, like, the one thing that sort of did feel like it, it could almost hurt the company, we said it before, was the whole anthem, um, you know, sort of trying to take everything over and whatnot and, and really take things over, take, take stock to more out of it, you know. But it is what it is. Um, and I think that it was really... Silly and abrupt and, and all of that sort of stuff still, um, but the company's still going well uh, on the most part. They do need a, a lot more stuff to be going well, um, to be doing really well. And again, I still think that, you know, they could get that and they could get there, um, but it's how to get there. Um, and just making sure everyone converts to getting to that 
you know, live, you know, environment of TNA and you don't know what's going to happen even if you think you know what's going to happen uh, and that sort of thing. So, but yeah, like it could it could literally be anything like as far as you, you could know, it could be Sue Young back, <laughs> you know, like um we 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 keep I keep thinking that like it could be uh Kylan King, but I think she's still uh, rehabbing her injury, so good luck in rehabbing your injury. Hopefully, you'll be back sooner rather than later. Um, so yeah, but still, um, yeah, it, it it literally could be anything. Um, but it will be interesting to see, and I can't wait. Uh, hope you guys can't wait to see it. As I say again, we will be doing a live stream of the Rebellion pay per view tomorrow live here on the channel so be sure to tune into that one um i hope you guys have enjoyed this one and i hope you guys will join me in that live stream or join me again in another one